Rahim Assalam Alaikum. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the modulation. So, what is modulation? Modulation is basically used to shift the signal spectra. In modulation, a very high frequency carrier wave is combined with a message signal, which is a low frequency signal, and transmitted over a medium. Remember that we call this message signal a baseband signal or a modulating signal. So, I can also call this message signal a baseband signal or a modulating signal. There are two words used, other two words used for this message signal which are baseband and modulating. Now why do we need the modulation? Number one reason is to reduce the antenna size. For effective radiation of power over a radio link, the antenna size must be on the order of the wavelength of the signal to be transmitted. For example, the signal frequency is 3 kilohertz for example and I want to transmit this signal over ear. Now we know that we have the famous equation which is C is equal to F lambda which means that lambda is equal to C by F and C is the speed of light which is which is 3 multiplied by 10 raised to power 8 meter per second and this is 3 kilohertz which means this is 3000 so this is 3 kilohertz is 3000 hertz. Now if you simplify this you will get 10 raised to power 5 meter. So the wavelength is 10 raised to power 5 meter and the antenna size be uh, antenna size must be some 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 order of the wavelength. For example the antenna size is lambda by 10. If the antenna size is lambda by 10 we are going to get 10 raised to power 4 meter which is actually 10 kilometer. Now this length of the antenna is practically not possible. That's why we need to perform modulation. So it is not practically possible to have antenna of 10 km. That's why we shift the signal to the higher frequency that is we perform modulation and thus by performing modulation the antenna size required will be much smaller. For example if we perform modulation and we convert this signal to 3 megahertz. When we convert this signal to 3 megahertz we are again going to use the formula that lambda is equal to C by F. Now when we use this formula. 10 3 raised to power 8 meter per second c is the speed of light and this is 3 multiplied by 6 so we are going to get 100 meter so now in this case the wavelength of the signal is 100 meter and for example again the antenna size is lambda by 10 which is the order of some of some order of the wavelength so again if we perform this lambda by 10 this will be 100 meter divided by 10 so this will be 10 meter now this length is practically possible. So why do we perform modulation to reduce the antenna size? Next reason of performing modulation is to avoid frequency interference. If several signals each occupying the same frequency band are transmitted simultaneously over the same transmission medium, they will all interfere and it will be impossible for receiver to separate them. This problem is also solved by modulation where each station shifts the signal spectrum to the allotted frequency band which is not occupied by any other station and in this way the frequency interfer interference is avoided by allocating different frequency band. This method of transmitting several signals simultaneously over a channel by using different frequency band is called frequency division multiplexing or FDM. Next is the baseband and passband signals. Now what are baseband signals? Baseband signals are directly transmitted and doesn't involve modulation. Examples are audio and video signals. These baseband signals are usually transmitted in wire channels, for example, copper wires, twisted cables, and coaxial cables. Now pass bands are the signals that uses modulation. For example, frequency shift for transmission, uh, that is, amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. So the passband signal uses modulation, whereas the baseband signal does not use modulation. And there is another term used for this passband signal which is called carrier modulation or carrier communication. The other word used for this is carrier modulation because in this communication we use the modulation. And this is the type of communication. We have the baseband communication where modulation is not used. We have the carrier communication where modulation is used. Carrier communication can be further divided into analog and digital. 
In analog, in analog, we have the amplitude modulation, the frequency modulation, and the phase modulation. Similarly, in digital, we have the amplitude shift keying, the phase shift keying, and the, the frequency shift keying, and the phase shift keying. Now, to know about the types of modulation, let us consider a sinusoidal signal, which is our carrier signal. So, let us denote it by S of t, and we are going to have a carrier signal, which is A of t, cosine of omega ct plus pi of t. Now, if you look at this equation, or if, you, or if you look at this mathematical expression, we have three variables. One is the amplitude, other is the frequency, and the finally we have the phase. So we have three variables and the message signal can be used to modulate any of these three parameters to allow the carrier signal carry information from transmitter to receiver. Now based on these three variables we have three types of modulation. The amplitude modulation, the frequency modulation and the phase modulation. In amplitude modulation if we change the amplitude of the carrier wave with respect to the message signal that is called the amplitude modulation. In amplitude modulation, we change amplitude of carrier wave, we change amplitude of carrier wave with respect to message signal. With respect to message signal. In frequency modulation, we change frequency of carrier wave with respect to message signal and in phase modulation, we change phase of carrier wave with respect to message signal. Now these two combinedly are called the angle modulation. Also remember that if this amplitude modulation is a linear modulation while this angle modulation is a non-linear modulation. So this frequency and phase modulation is a non-linear modulation. So the first type of modulation that we are going to discuss is the amplitude modulation. Now there are different types of amplitudes modulation we have the double side band suppressed carrier which is known as dsbsc we have the double side band with carrier we have single side band and finally we have the vestigial side band let us discuss the double side band suppressed carrier so if we have a message signal m of t and we want to transform this message signal to some higher frequency center fc we simply multiply the message signal with the carrier signal cosine omega ct or cosine 2 pi f ct. So this is my message signal which is also called the modulating signal. So message signal is called the baseband signal or message signal or modulating signal. And this is multiplied by a higher, higher frequency carrier which is cosine omega ct. And when this is multiplied we have a modulated signal which is called m of t cosine omega ct. So suppose we have a message signal or a baseband signal or a modulating signal m of t and this is multiplied by a carrier signal which is, which is cosine omega ct. Let me denote it by s of t. Now so we are going to have s of t is equal to m of t cosine omega ct. Now if you convert it into a frequency domain, we are going to use the frequency shifting property. So in frequency domain, this can be written as half m into f plus fc plus m into f minus fc. Let me name it as equation 1. The Fourier transform of m of t will be m of f. And the Fourier transform of this message signal multiplied by the carrier is going to be half m of f plus fc uh, plus m of f minus fc. Where this m of f minus fc is shifted to the right by fc. And this m of f plus fc is shifted to the left. Th thus in the process of modulation the spectrum is shifted. The modulating signal spectrum is shifted to the left and right by fc. So if we have a message signal in frequency domain whose bandwidth is b hertz, 
here we are only going to consider the positive side for the bandwidth so this bandwidth is 3 hertz and when we take and when we use the frequency shifting property we are going to shift this signal this message signal by fc to the left and right so this signal has been shifted to the left and right by the uh, by the amount fc we have the minus fc over here and we have the plus fc and on this side we are going to have minus fc minus b where b is the bandwidth of the message signal and on this side we are going to have minus fc plus b similarly on this side we are going to have fc minus b and on this side we are going to have fc plus b so now the bandwidth of this signal has become double because if you calculate the bandwidth here this is 2b hertz so in double side band double side band amplitude modulation the bandwidth becomes double also this portion from here this is called the upper side band while this is called the lower side band similarly here the spectrum to the right of fc is called the upper side band usb and the spectrum to the left is called the lower side band lsb for example we have a message signal whose bandwidth is 3 kilohertz so it means that this will be minus 3 kilohertz and this will be 3 kilohertz suppose we multiplied with a carrier whose center frequency fe is fc is 6 kilohertz so in that case let me write it as 6 kilohertz so in that case this minus fc minus b is going to be minus 9 kilohertz and this will be minus 3 kilohertz similarly this is going to be 3 kilohertz this point is going to be 3 kilohertz and this point is going to be 9 kilohertz because fc is 6 and bandwidth of the message signal b is 3 kilohertz so we have now minus 9 kilohertz to so minus 3 kilohertz it means the bandwidth of this shifted spectrum is now 6 kilohertz which is the double of the message signal so in double side band uh, uh, in the double side band suppressed carrier uh, the bandwidth becomes double we can also understand this in time domain so we have the message signal m of t and then message signal m of t is multiplied by some carrier which is of higher frequency so as a result we have the signal m of t cosine omega omega ct and if you look at here this is my modulated signal so this is my positive m of t and this is my minus m of t so when this signal is multiplied by a carrier of higher frequency the result is the modulated signal which is of this form and if you look at here at the zero crossings we have the phase reversal over here so this is the time domain representation of the amplitude modulation now why do we call it the double side band because unless the message signal has impulse at zero frequency the modulated signal doesn't contain a sinusoid at fc that is why it is called the compressed carrier so the spectrum of double side band compressed carrier does not have impulses at plus minus fc if you can look, look at here we does not have an impulse over here this is my fc representation we do not have an impulse at minus fc and positive fc that is why it is called the double side band suppressed carrier now there is one restriction that needs to be fulfilled when we talk about the double side band suppressed carrier the restriction is the carrier frequency fc must be greater than the bandwidth of the message signal else there will be overlapping the message signal is our modulating signal at the baseband signal for example our carrier frequency is smaller that is 3 kilohertz and for example the bandwidth of the message signal is greater which is for example 4 kilohertz usually the restriction is that fc must be greater than the b but in this case this condition is not satisfied now we are going to sue we are going to see that because of this we are going to have the overlapping so the message signal bandwidth is 4 kilohertz which means that if i represent the message signal for example this is my minus 4 kilohertz and this is my 4 kilohertz so the message signal will be like this here is bandwidth is 4 kilohertz again we are going to consider the positive side for the bandwidth which is the 4 kilohertz now if i perform the frequency shifting property that is if i perform the modulation we are going to have the a modulated signal which will be like here i am going to have minus fc this is fc so this is going to be our one side is going to be minus fc minus beta and the other side is going to be minus fc plus b so minus fc minus b is going to be minus 7 kilohertz 
and minus fc plus b that is minus 3 plus 4 is going to be 4 kilohertz so this minus fc plus b is going to be here so so minus fc plus b this is actually equal to 1 kilohertz will be on the positive side so we are going to have the spectrum like this now this is the left sided spectrum now for the right sided spectrum which is fc again we are going to have fc minus beta and fc plus beta plus b so fc minus b is actually minus 1 kilohertz and fc plus b is 7 kilohertz so for example fc minus b is my here which is minus 1 kilohertz and fc plus b is 7 kilohertz which is somewhere here so this is fc plus b which is 7 kilohertz so we are so this will be our right sided spectrum so if we can have a look we have the overlapping over here that is why the carrier, carrier frequency must be greater than the bandwidth of the message signal which is denoted by b not beta but denoted by b so usually the carrier frequency is taken very very greater than the bandwidth of the message signal for example in broadcast am radios where the modulation frequency range is 550 kilohertz to 1600 kilohertz and the message signal bandwidth is 5 kilohertz so the fc by b ratio becomes 110 to 320 which is very very greater than 1 thank you